roads of yesterday made into modern highways of today. Adventure and mystery around the corner. As we travel smoothly and swiftly along these broad highways, how many of us think of the work that goes into their construction? Highway departments plan far ahead the most efficient highway system. And always, as science learns better methods, the roads are improved. Engineers prepare the plans and specifications. These are usually submitted to different contractors, and the lowest reliable bidder gets the contract. 500 workmen of many different crafts will be employed at one time. This contractor confers with his foreman on the blueprints. Work begins. Surveyors stake out the ground for the direction and height of the road. Their instruments measure the distance exactly. These stakes guide the carpenters in building their forms and the graders in laying out the proper levels. A small brass point or plumb bob held from a string is used to show the line which will be marked by stakes. Danger, slow, equipment at work. Mountains are no barrier to the highway engineer. Cuts are made in mountains and hills in order to make the road straight. Slopes are graded to proper levels to prevent landslides. It is dangerous for the men working high up on the mountain cliffs, preparing to dynamite a mountain, but these men are experts at their work. Jim is preparing to lower himself down the cliff by a rope. He drives the iron stake securely into the ground. His life depends on its strength. A firm knot tied to his safety belt, holds him fast. Cautiously selecting his footholds, he lets himself down the cliff to a lower ledge. There he joins the other dynamiters at work. Each man is tied by a rope. Heavy drills called air hammers cut the holes to the proper depth. The power is furnished by an air compressor, which is run by a gasoline engine. The air is forced through hoses to operate the heavy, unwieldy drills. These holes are drilled four to six feet apart. The powder expert judges the proper depth and spacing of the holes, and also the amount of powder that this particular rock will take. Two men are necessary to operate the long-stemmed drill hammer. Dirt is blown out of the holes by the compressed air. Powder dynamite is put in first. Then a stick of dynamite is prepared and cut so that it will spread in the hole. This stick has an electric cap and wire to carry the spark which will blow up the dynamite. The hole is filled up with sand or loose dirt. More sticks will be planted in other holes until they have the number necessary to blow up this ledge. A main wire leads from the generator box that will set off the electric spark. The wires from the different holes will be tested and joined to this main wire. The main wire must stretch far enough away from the blast so that the man who fires the shot will be safe. Traffic passing near must be stopped and kept a safe distance away. The warning signal. Another blast is ready. the dynamiters have done a good job. The loose rock can now be moved by a huge power shovel. Trucks will carry the dirt to low places that need to be filled in. It takes only a few shovelfuls to fill up the truck, and then off she goes.
As soon as one truck leaves, another pulls up for a load. These are well timed so that no time is wasted. Some shovels are able to scoop up five cubic yards of dirt. The operator oils his boom shovel and dipper stick to keep them running smoothly. If a machine breaks down, many men may be kept from work. This means loss of time and money. Now the ground is fairly level and is ready to be graded off. Powerful graders and scrapers take over the job. This caterpillar tractor, called a bulldozer, weighs 18 tons and has a blade in front 11 feet wide. These tanks are similar to those used in warfare. They can go up an angle over 45 degrees. And here we have a sheep foot roller which smooths the ground still further. In a large construction job, various types of work are carried on at the same time in different parts of the project. Men dig the trenches for the underground construction work, such as drain pipes, sewer pipes, and domestic water pipes. Storm drains are necessary to carry the surplus water off the roads in heavy rains. These concrete pipes are laid out in sections and are carefully joined. A crane hoists a huge section of iron pipe for the domestic water supply. Iron is used because it is stronger and can carry more pressure. The pipe must be painted white, otherwise the hot sun would make the iron too hot to work on. Tar is used to paint the joints of the pipe to keep out moisture. The men who work on the tar wagon wear dark glasses and paint their faces with a protective cream to keep them from being badly burned by the fumes from the hot tar. The men who work around the pipes must wear masks to prevent them from breathing the poison fumes from the paint. The joints are tested by an electrically connected brush which will show a spark if at any spot the pipe is not covered by the tar. The man marks a spot and it is quickly mended. Men must be aware at all times of the dangers connected with their work. Here the welders are working in a trench that is 12 feet deep. Arc welding is very hot work. It reaches a heat of 6,300 degrees Fahrenheit. The welders cannot stand the heat for very long and so alternate the work in short shifts. This large pipe runs through a bypass in the mountain to carry domestic water from the aqueduct high up in the mountains to the city reservoir. Smaller trenches are made to hold the cast iron service pipe for drinking water. Ropes make it easier to lower the heavy pipes. These smaller pipes lead out from the big iron pipe, part of the distributing system that brings the water from the reservoir to your home. An important part of this road building project is the construction of power lines, telegraph lines, and telephone lines. These are built underground and high above ground. Here, electricians carry on their work while balanced dangerously on ladders and poles. This lineman carries his tools on his belt. Every tool has its special place. Steel spikes on his boots dig firmly into the post. He climbs up easily and quickly and works as if he were in his own shop. He will pull the wires into position and install the fixtures for the electricity. Connections must be cleaned, soldered, and wrapped with rubber tape to ensure perfect insulation and long service in all kinds of weather. An imperfect connection would be dangerous to the electricians who mend the wires. It takes men of many trades to build a road, but when the noon whistle blows, they're all ready to stop for lunch. Men have to eat, and who deserves food and rest and a friendly argument more than these builders of the broad highway?